Let's go to Dave from Highland. Hey, uh, i got a question for you. And you might consider a rhetorical question at that. But uh, Mr. McDermott has made it perfectly clear that uh, as chairman, his hat, when he has his chairman hat on, that it's his job to organize and get Democrats elected. Is that true? As many as uh, he possibly can, according to his own words. But it just, it just seems that to me, you know, and he, he's got a lot of Democrats elected him, and there's no doubt about it. So in that regard, he's doing a pretty good job. Yeah, but he's got, he got one less elected than, uh, than the last guy did because he lost the uh, assessor's office. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? The Dems have, what, a 54-year run? They've had a pretty good run in, in Lake County. Sure. And, the, and they'll continue to be the, the majority for, for a long time. But it just seems to me... The second any of them get in trouble, not even convicted, just indicted, is it me or does he throw them under the bus real fast? Well, I don't know. Um, nobody, okay. Well, no one, no one, uh, no one admitted. You're right to one respect. I'll tell you what I do remember. No one admitted that they even know, knew Bobby Cantrell, which I I know that that was that was a bunch of BS. <laughs> Yeah, the guy's the guy's been around for forty five years pulling strings, and nobody knows who he is. He worked Come on. on he worked on people's campaigns, and the very people whose campaigns he worked on and helped them get elected acted <laughs> like they never they had no idea who the guy was. Right, right exactly. And that, he was the mystery man. He uh, was the man behind the curtain. And he, uh, now, now uh, McDermott uh, didn't have a problem. Uh, um, defending the mailman when you know during the uh, the major marijuana scandal he, right he he uh he st- he uh came on the radio and defended him uh he said that phil pops is a friend of his and i don't know if he'll throw him under the bus of course we all know that uh, tom is innocent until proven guilty right absolutely but i i don't know i don't know that uh, you have to remember if you throw somebody under the bus too hard and they get uh you know they get too angry about it they might have something to say about you, or if, don't, or if you don't get, you know, don't get, don't get convicted. Well, then, and that's and that's a, a possibility too. Uh, right. But it's hard. It's hard unless you're Marion Barry from Washington D.C. to bounce back from something like this. Though I, I don't doubt that Phil Pops would uh, take a would take a stab at it. Remember, the guy's a pilot, a lawyer, and a doctor. So it's it's not like he's going to starve to death. Right. I don't know. Do they remove your licenses for something like this? I don't think I'm, so. I'm sure after this, if uh, they might, I'm, I'm sure there's ethics boards for the bar and the the state medical examiner or whatever, whoever does that. I'm sure there's ethics uh, uh, investigators. You know, and you might have to go in front of an ethics board, but you know, I'm, I'm just like you know, I'm like MX. I hope everything comes out good because. I, I truly, I truly like, I truly like the man. I, I think he's a super nice guy. So you want him to beat the rap too? Yes, I do. Okay, well that's three of us. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. All right. Eight four five eleven hundred. This one smells bad. It's stinky. Hey, preach. Why don't all those perverts down down there uh, give that lesbian a break? Hey, stinky. How come I'm the only uh, talk show host on WJOB who calls you by your appropriate name, Stinky? <laughs> I don't know. You know what? Well, how about I got that name? Yeah, I, I, if I thought it offended you, I, I probably no, you wouldn't used to, call you that. Yeah, they used to call me when I when I was a kid back in the day. Right, had, they they called you little stinky. Yeah, I had I had some bad foot odor. Really? So you could use Phil Pops? So I uh, I never took off my socks when I went to bed at night. You know, <laughs> then I went to a friend's house and. Uh, that could be the part of the problem. And I had to take off my shoes and. That's where I got the nickname. So you could not, you would not, uh, you would not have had a good luck uh, if you married an Asian woman, because uh, you have to take your shoes off once in a while. Maybe her feet stink too, though. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you later, Breach. What happened to the pervert story? I wanted to hear more about the pervert. All right, let's go to. Uh, Let's go to Walt. Uh, he's in favor of same-sex marriages. Am I? Are you? Hey, no. you got to ask for something. No. Or I'm going to hang up on you. 
Well, uh, let me just say this. Walt, I'm going to hang up on you if you don't know the routine here. What's the routine? Oh, oh I have to, uh, I'm going to mulligan. Oh, then you got a mulligan. Okay. My last call, I mean, unlike you and others who called in, I'm not a personal friend of, of Mr. Philpott, and I could care less whether he's a nice guy or not. Right. What I do care about is that my federal government uses its resources in a sensible way to deal with real crime. Okay? Right. Mm -hmm. we got plenty around. Now, here's an example of the kind of prosecutorial abuses that the federal government engages in against the American citizen. This is an article out of the Chicago Tribune, uh, September 14th, uh, on page 22. Give me the Reader's Digest version. The federal government sought criminal charges, a year in jail, and a $50,000 fine against one Jeremy Hill, um, raising six kids in the woods of northern Idaho, because what did he do? What was his great crime? He shot a grizzly bear that approached the family's house within 40 yards. And then he pleasured himself. No. And because of the, the, the popular outrage against this, uh -huh. eventually the federales had the sense to reduce the, the, the action to a $1,000 civil fine. Let me just tell you. Okay, so this poor guy did not go to prison. Well, they were trying to put him in prison. It was only because of popular outrage against it mm -hmm. that uh, the feds backed off. Well, now, thank God. I worked out in northern Idaho back when I was a college student, and I tell you, grizzlies are a problem out there. And when we worked in the woods, we made all kinds of noises so we would not uh, surprise or stumble onto a, a grizzly bear because one <laughs> swat was that. Walt, this is, this is actually uh, insulting to, to my intelligence. I see a grizzly bear anywhere near me within 300 yards, and I have something to pound him with. I'm going to kill it. And and he, he ain't going to eat me. Yeah, and, and they tried to – He the, Mr. Hill took the man as soon as he, he killed the animal. Right, uh, it was a sow and two juveniles. They're All right, get the, Phil, get the right. Phil Pops here. Are you going to connect this to Phil Pops somehow? It's called prosecutorial abuse. Okay. Fed rallies are certainly up to it, and this is a good example of it. Here's a guy, and then here's the element that, that, that there's a parallel here. It's, he reported this incident to the state fish and game authorities immediately. They then turned it over to the Fed rallies. The local, the local prosecutor chose not to prosecute him, but the feds chose to try to prosecute him, put him in jail, and give him a fine of $50,000. 10 for Well, I'm sure he doesn't have the money, and I don't know how that connects to Phil Pops, but who's on? Uh, where's the other mulligan here? All right. Yeah, Victor, run out of time here. Are you pleasuring yourself today? Well, hey, big freaks. Not lately. Not lately. I, I, I don't have any shoulders, you know, so I can't put no real action in the business. You know? Short arm, but, uh, are you? Uh, but hey, but other than all that good stuff, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm a Democrat and I'm a pro-choice guy, and, and I'm definitely not in favor of abortions. And I'm a married guy, and I love my women. But uh, are you? But I'm but, a guy but, that believes in free. It's your life, and I'm not supposed to be telling you how to live your personal life. Well, wait, wait, wait a second. It, wait a second. What if uh, you got you got kids? Because I met one of them. I, you met my kid. I got kids. I got grandkids. Okay. I got nieces. I got nephews. I got them all those little ones to feed. Oh, well, well, what about when uh, when the Democratic, uh, politically correct, left wing liberal bleeding heart start teaching your kid that it's okay? What if he buys into that, there, uh, Daddy? There is no such thing as liberal bleeding hearts. I mean, there's people that care about issues. I mean, I listened to a guy the other day talk about tree huggers when I was talking about the ecology. Nah. Yeah, it's propaganda. It's political propaganda. All right, you got to hang up and listen to my 10 uh, undeniable truths of Lake County, okay? Bless up, my brother, man. Bye. Thank you so much, Victor. I think Victor, were, I think Victor was democratically pleasuring himself while he was on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Rex Hill, boy. Can I can I do my uh, the preacher's ten undeniable truths of Lake County now. All right, you guys can catch this on my Facebook page. I'm surprised that the Times or the Post hasn't picked this up and published it yet because that's how cool it really is, Rex. Did you know that? Have you read it? Have you have you bothered to read it? You're supposed to be my guy. 
You and I holding hands. What? And a couple of tra la las or something. Hey, hey now. Watch it. <laughs> uh, this is where we need the drum roll, man. What do we have? Uh, what do we have that will serve as a drum roll? Anything? That's no drum roll. How about this? What's this? Is this a drum roll? <laughs> That's all we got. Boys soccer coming up tonight. Highland taking on Griffith. That's the Highland boys against the Griffith girls, right? Damn Democrats. That's the way it should be. Boys should be playing with girls, not boys. I don't want those Griffith boys over there playing with those Highland boys. Because it's not right. <laughs> okay, what do we got for music? How about this? All right, The Preacher's 10, Undeniable Truce of Lake County, number one. Twin County office in Lake, you must kowtow to the city of Gary. Number two. You can't drive 10 miles without seeing, hearing, or being stopped by a train. You like that one? Number three, most politicians believe elected office is a license to steal. Am I exaggerating or do I tell the truth? Number four, has the best tap water on the planet. Now, a lot of people have been bad rapping me on that one. I still think it's the best water I've ever tasted. Number five, somewhere a politician in Lake County is under investigation. Number six, your house has ants. Number seven, someone in your family has worked or is working in the mills. Number eight, people listen to WJOB. Number nine, the rest of the state hates us. And number 10, sooner or later, everybody comes back. <laughs> 